Hello, everyone. Welcome to this webinar. We're going to talk about the end of the year reporting for SDR today. My name is Ash, and I'm a product specialist at WiseBit. Before we start, let's get to know your Zoom control panel. Please feel free to raise your hand at any point if you have any technical difficulties or questions during the presentation. You can also use the Q&A or the chat option to type in your questions. There'll be plenty of time for questions at the end of the session as well. At WISE that we've been able to accomplish so much this year. We released our e-learning integration for Moodle and Canvas and successfully transitioned many customers across to the new integration. We released a more robust zero integration and added event alerts to show you details of when records are unsuccessfully processed. We released application management, which helps keep track of all your applications and enrollments efficiently. We also released new access roles and advanced portal settings, which I'll be sharing more details with you shortly. Let's take a look at what we're here for today. Before I start talking about SDR exports and validations, I would like to quickly share details about the recently released opportunity feature enhancements, the e-learning integration changes, user roles and vaccination field updates. When you select the list toggle view on the opportunities page, you have the options to fill the opportunities by stages or to sort by each column. Click on the actions menu if you need to edit or delete opportunities, as well as send emails to a list of opportunities in bulk. If you use our e-learning integration, you can now choose whether you want unit enrollment rules to only be applicable when a unit enrollment has an outcome. It'll enroll a learner into Moodle or Canvas only if the outcome is not empty for New Zealand. The learner will no longer need to manually decline or accept their enrollment in Canvas. When a learner is set to active in WiseNet, the learner will be automatically accepted and enrolled in Canvas. Courses and sub-accounts will also sync to WiseNet from Canvas. A new field called GradePoint has been added to the unit enrollment gradebook unit update section. This allows a specific GradePoint value to be entered against a unit enrollment. This has also been added to the auto grade feature, allowing it to be set as part of the e-learning grade sync. We've released some changes to the credential management. User role can no longer issue credentials. They can only request credentials and a higher access level will have to issue them. There are additional checks when the learner's fees is not completely paid. The unit end dates are in the future or if the outcome is incomplete. You can no longer delete requested credentials just to ensure transparency and users don't delete printed credentials without issuing them. We've released some new and updated user access roles to provide you with greater flexibility in how you can provide just enough access for each user to complete their job. Based on your feedback, we introduced some new user roles and tweaks and permissions of existing roles. This was completed over two stages in the last couple of weeks. And all portal administrators should have received emails prior to the release of each stage. We highly recommend that you take time to review our article in our resource um, called the transition to new user access roles, which explains what has changed and what you need to do. The portal settings have been moved to the LRM settings page and grouped into different categories according to your access roles, making it easy for you to turn on and off certain permissions. The requirements for COVID are ever changing throughout different countries, jurisdictions, etc. We've opted to provide a flexible solution to capture vaccination details rather than very specific fields that would um, quickly become obsolete. We've just released a couple new fields like the vaccination status and the vaccination status notes, which you can find under personal details within the profile for a learner. And once you update these fields, the same information is also displayed in the profile special care panel. The same fields have been added for staff if you need to maintain staff vaccination statuses and the vaccination status values can be customized under the drop downs, um, under the settings drop down list. We've created an article to help guide you through some examples on how you can best track COVID-19 information as well in our resource. That brings us to our main segment for today. Before we start talking about SDR files or how to capture the data. I'm just going to stop a quick set to answer any questions. Thank you. All right. In today's session, we'll be looking at how to run the SDR exports, how data is entered and exported, 
how to run data integrity checks and rectify validation errors. Let's start by understanding the WISE terminologies. A program or a qual corresponds to a course and a course or paper or module corresponds to a unit in WISENET. The SDR is a set of files which you can easily export from WISENET. The files contain data on learner characteristics, course enrollment details and actual Fs on a monthly basis. The full SDR files must be submitted electronically to the Ministry of Education three times a year as of 15 April, 7th August and the 31st of December. The first two returns are provisional and the December return is final. Additionally, there is an in, uh, indicative return due on the 10th week of the year, which requires only COUR, STUD and the correct files to be uploaded. You can easily run the SDR files from the reports export section, choose the SDR export and select the extract day, year and the day. We'll go through each section of WISE to ensure you do not miss any of the SDR related fields. There are five SDR files, each of which has a particular purpose. The STUD file, which is for your student um, correlating learners in your WISE with learners in the NSI. The COUR or the course enrollment, a declaration of what your organization is uh, delivering based on the unit enrollments in your WISENET. The CREG or the CREG or course register file confirming that unit details in your WISENET match the details on record at TSC. The QUAL or the qualification completion file um, where you're lodging a record of qualification attainment and the COMP or the course completion which records outcomes of unit enrollment. Now information in each of these files is collected using specific WISENET fields. The SDR file guidelines article outlines each field that is in the SDR files and provides required information regarding collection and location in WISENET. The data that is submitted in the five different SDR files are all related and entered in WISENET at various levels. Let's see how the information is gathered at all these levels in WISENET. So you have your first level, which is the courses and units. Then you have the course, course offers and unit offers then all that information from the course and the course offer level goes into the course enrollments and the unit and the unit offer level is gone into the, goes into the unit enrollments. And of course you have your learner details as well that will be linked to your course enrollments and unit enrollments. At the course level, which is your qualification or program, it is important to enter the course code description and the nominal hours. At the unit level, which is your course paper or module, there are many fields as highlighted here, like the unit code, description, field of study, uh, version numbers, apps, funding sources, et cetera, that needs to be updated. The course offer behaves like a template, so ensure that correct details have been set up so the learners enrolling into the offers inherit the correct default values. The fee assessment category and the mural attendance codes are important as well, and that those fields are present against the unit training detail because it then gets transferred to the unit enrollment. So there are certain fields that are added at the unit offer level and certain fields that are inherited from the course offer level. So as you can see, so the blue is what you enter and what you see in black is what, it, what is inherited from the course offer itself. Same at the course enrollment level, there are certain fields that you have to update. Now, the study road in the course and, um, enrollment status doesn't get reported to the department, but it plays a very important role in terms of reporting because the system auto updates information based on the enrollment status being withdrawn or completed or cancelled or current, et cetera. You can choose to report the foreign fee either in the STUD file or the CREC file. If you charge fees per unit enrollment, then you will be reporting um, the fees, the foreign fee in the CREC file. And if you charge them per course enrollment on top of the unit enrollments, then you'll be putting the fee even in the course enrollment so it gets reported in the STUD file. The value of the foreign fee is, as I said, recorded at each unit offer. The CREC file just takes the highest fee value recorded against the unit offer linked to a, a reported unit enrollment. If blank, they'll report as zero. The learner profile contains important information about the learner's personal contact details, mobile address, NSN, 
healthcare details, etc., including fee spray, citizenship, demographic information, and passport country for international learners. So click through the tabs to add all the information as required. It's always a good idea to run reports internally to check your data. The 2001 demographic report contains all demographic data that is required for your STUD file. This will help you identify any gaps in the data and if any field is missing information. The 522 report will provide you with information regarding the qualifications that have been issued with a completed status and the qual issued flag ticked. The 2003 is also a very useful report to get information regarding the course and the unit enrollments. This report also includes the outcomes and results for the learners. Now, I've also listed some data integrity reports that you can run per file, which is very useful before you run your final exports from within WiseNet. Let's talk about EPS. The Equal and Full-Time um, Student is a New Zealand government standard for assessing the time contribution of a unit enrollment. So in WiseNet, EPS is collected at the unit level for default value. Um, and then the unit RFAR for default value for newly created unit enrollments, and then the unit enrollment, which is the lowest level from which the EFS um, reporting is completed. The EFS monthly values are determined by using the following fields at the unit enrollment level, which is your EFS value, the unit enrollment start date, the unit enrollment end date, or withdrawal date if the outcome is withdrawn, and of course, if the SDR is true. So you can run any of these internal reports and the most popular being the 2043 and 2054 to um, get more information about your F summary. If you have a large number of instances of a particular error and you think they need to be fixed one by one, fix a few sample records first and then revalidate your data. And if needed, you may also log a support ticket to us so we can investigate further and help you fix the errors in bulk. So I've just listed some common SDR errors in here. Um, the 388, is something that is commonly logged to us. This means that, you know, um, I mean, the error reads complete as one and course end date has passed, which means that, you know, the end date has passed for the learner, but the outcome is just left as one, which is still to complete the course. All you have to do is just update the outcome and keep it current. The 390 and the 391, again, um, it, this is a very common error. It's given when you are reporting the same result multiple times. And so you just have to ensure you have updated the final result after the third consecutive SDR submission. Um, update the unit enrollment outcome code to fix this error as well. We do have a list of SDR errors and how to rectify and everything in our resource. You can also look at the education.gov.nz um, manual to get more information about the same. You can download the validation report from STEO. Uh, please note, we wouldn't be able to do this for you because we don't have, have access to STEO and we wouldn't even know, um, you know how to help you work around STEO. So if you need, training in STEO, please do contact the department, uh, the Ministry of Education, please, thank you. And if you're unsure of any errors, please do contact us and send us the validation error report as an Excel document, because we need information about the field, the um, record that is being affected and, and also the course details. Now I've included some useful article links throughout the presentation. We will be uploading the recording as well as the presentation slides to learn for further reference. Thank you, I'm open to any questions now. Um, for people who wanna jump out of the session, just a quick note on our um, office close date. So we are working until the 23rd of December until 5 p.m. So if you have any tickets to be lodged or if you need further help, please log them or before the 22nd so we have time to get back to you. And we're back on deck on the 10th of Jan 2022. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for attending. Thanks for your feedback. Thank you. I'll be here for a couple more minutes to answer any questions. Thank you.